We had an especially hard time because we had a lot of convictions about what the product should look like and what kinds of things it should do. And those convictions weren't necessarily the same ones that our direct customer, the carriers, had. You know, they were still in love with WAP and MMS and SMS and uh, wanted, wanted us to build another device just like all the other devices on the planet. Um, whereas we felt like it was more important that it be more like a little tiny computer and that it have a really... From an internet standpoint. From an internet point of view. And that it have, you know, a really cool industrial design. Um, you know, you see a lot of this in rap videos too now. And uh, a lot of it is because of the functionality and a lot of it is just because it's a cool looking product. People like having it and they're able to impress their friends with it. And so, um, you know, we were able to... Can you do the flip thing again? Which one? <laughs> this one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get good at that. You do it a lot. I've taught the two-year-old how to do it, actually. <laughs> then there's also the, the one like that. And, you know, uh, going back to kind of what Matt was talking about, you know, understanding what your customers are going to want. Um, sometimes it's understanding what your customers' customers are going to want. Um, and it's, it's, you know, being able to... Uh, have a strong sort of passionate feeling about what it is that you actually need to build that's going to it's going to turn them on. You know, nobody told us to put a flip screen on it. Nobody told us to make the wheel light up different colors. Those were all things that we just felt like would make the product more appealing to us. And that and that's a dangerous line to walk too, right? I mean, you don't want to build a product that's just appealing to you because you might be the only person like that. Um, and and a lot of experience from places like Apple and Web TV and General Magic, um, I think, helped temper those those kinds of passions so that we would try to step back a little bit and think about things in, in a, a bigger uh, bigger way. But, but you have to act with conviction. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not sort of the lowest common denominator. It's what you feel really strongly about. And that's really important because as hard as you're going to work, you better feel strongly about what you're going to undertake. So that, that's another thing which, which really delights me about the product is it's a reflection of the, the passion that people had who created it. And there are a lot of things there which are which are maybe outwardly visible in terms of say like the flip and, and the flashing wheel, but even just sort of the look and feel and, and, and some of the features that engineers just would decide, okay, I want this in there. I'm gonna make it happen. Stay the nights, stay the weekends, just just you know, get it in there. And um, you know that that's part of why the, the product I think is so great, is because there's a lot of that in there. And being a contributor, being an entrepreneur or an engineer or whatever it is that contributes to consumer products, it's, it's part of the fascination for me about consumer products because it touches people. And you can write a piece of software, design a piece of hardware that delights people. And that's magical when you see people actually latch onto it. There's been some really bad ideas, but you know, if you have 50 bad ideas and one, one idea delights somebody, it's pretty cool. I think it's also about continuing to delight. You know, when we first launched this thing, before anybody else saw it, they would see it and they would say, hmm, you know, it looks kind of like a soap bar. And then you would do this. And the first time we did that was at the Demo Mobile Conference um, in uh, Torrey Pines. And the whole room just erupted in applause because nobody had ever seen anything like that before. It was the very first time, you know, any other device would have been a slab or it would have had some kind of clamshell design. So. You start out with that, that's the hook, and they're like, oh, what is that? And then they start looking a little bit closer, and then they realize, oh, this software looks pretty cool. You know, you start to find out more and more what I call surprises within surprises about the product that I think are, are very important for a consumer product. You know, if you're building something for enterprise, it's, um, it's not so important. It's mainly a tool to... It's like an ROI kind of equation. Oh, I can use that to make more money, great, I'll buy it. Well, like, you know, the BlackBerry, for example, that's not a tool for fun. That's a tool to keep your boss from yelling at you. You want to you wanna make sure that you know what's going on back in the office. But HipTop, it's more of an extension of what you enjoy doing on your computer for fun, communicating with friends and family and doing it in a, a graphical, entertaining way. Um, and that goes back to the conviction of, you know, what should this product be? Well, a lot of people wanted us to build another BlackBerry because BlackBerry at the time was, was very successful and all the VCs carried BlackBerrys, so of course they would want us to start a company to build another version of that thing that they understood really well. And that's another example of how it, it can be a conviction that maybe your investors don't fully understand either, that you, you have to keep explaining to them over and over again. Or you can keep looking for investors. <laughs> <laughs>